They were to be the first astronauts to launch from this site since the glory days of the Apollo missions, 15 years before. Waiting for them behind the swing doors were the closeout crew, the last people they'd see before leaving Earth. CDR, this is LTD on air to bow one. I reach five by, I'll be. Good morning. Good morning. Good While each astronaut was secured for takeoff, Pilot Mark Smith and Commander Dick Scobie proceeded to activate the shuttle's systems. At that point, the closeout crew went through the formality of securing the cabin. But the hatch door wouldn't close properly. There was a problem with the locking screws. Okay, uh, we got a problem on removing one of the screws on the milk stool. It appears it might have to be drilled out. Uh, OVCC, you're saying you cannot remove it. That is correct. Yeah, I've been working now for 40 minutes on it. Monstruct OTC, copy. Okay, do we have the proper tools up there to do that job? OVCC? That's a negative. I do not have the drill. Because it's a, a hazardous environment up there in the white room uh, with the potential of hydrogen vapors, uh, they wanted to use a battery drill rather than a power drill. So a battery drill was rushed up to them uh, it was flat, the battery was flat, it wouldn't, wouldn't work anymore. Nine more batteries were sent for three miles to the pad, but none of them worked. We had some problems with the hatch and a lot of conversation between the mechanisms engineer that's responsible for the hatch and the flight crew and myself, and unfortunately the equipment that we sent out didn't work properly and we could not resolve the hatch issue. Finally, they used a hacksaw to cut the bolt off and the door was sealed. But the whole process had taken over three hours, long enough for strong crosswinds to build. Office director, the challenge. Yeah, Dick and Mike, uh, we're looking at some crosswinds out the runway right now that don't look uh, favorable at all. Uh, we have just had an uh, announcement from uh, Launch Director Gene Thomas uh, to the crew and to the launch team that we are going to scrub for today. We were kind of geared for it, but that's a shame. I feel badly <laughs> for everybody. <laughs> I knew from Krista describing it and all that it was a very uncomfortable situation because they're laying on their back and kind of like that, and they can't really do anything. And to think that they had gone this hour or almost two hours or something laying in this position and because of a battery that was dead, you know, what's the matter with them? I mean, after all, this is NASA, right? They can do everything. They can, they can launch. They can put a ship up in orbit and they can't fix a, a screw and a handle. Yeah. Oh, DC, DC, DC. Go ahead, DC, DC. Okay, uh, we're bringing the screw out now. Okay. Copy that, and uh, be advised, we'll, we will be needing to do water drain. NASA decided on a 24-hour turnaround, but there was a new problem at the weather station. We prepared a forecast for the next day. We still had some concern over the winds, but we knew the winds would be decreasing, probably to within limits. The real concern for the next day was the very cold temperatures that we expected to come in the area and we put a 12-hour forecast uh, together and presented it to the uh, mission management people at, at which the, we forecast low temperatures of uh, 24 degrees at the pad for the next morning. 24 degrees Fahrenheit was exceptionally cold for Florida and indications were that it would drop as low as 18 degrees Fahrenheit, minus 10 degrees centigrade. NASA engineers recalled that a year earlier, Morton Thiokol had expressed concern about launching at low temperatures. A call was made to Utah. There was another program manager came by my, uh, my office and says, Bob, are you concerned about an 18 degree Fahrenheit launch? I says, what? Because we're qualified to only 40 degrees. I says, what business has anyone even got thinking about that? We're in no man's land, we're in a big gray area. Ebling asked for the O-Ring task force team to assemble in his office.
The O-rings had never been tested below freezing. And now the estimated temperatures were some 15 degrees colder. We discussed what might happen below our 40 degree qualification temperature. And uh, practically to the man, we all decided it was catastrophic. Thiokol immediately contacted NASA's rocket specialists. Thiokol recommended that we not launch until it warmed up in the afternoon. Well, I told Thiokol they couldn't make that kind of recommendation, that they would have to make a, they would have to give us a temperature at which they could launch. It was agreed they would have a teleconference in two hours when Thiokol engineers would make a formal presentation. With the launch only 15 hours away, both sides knew they were working against the clock. We all, as individual engineers, scurried to our offices, took out whatever we deemed necessary to make a presentation to present the rationale that would prevent a launch. Uh, unfortunately, in that hurried preparation, uh, we did not have time for a dry run. I had no idea what my colleagues were going to present and they had no idea what I was going to bring to the meeting. Although the presentation was unrehearsed, Thiokol thought that their arguments were clear and well presented. Oh yeah, they were good charts. Some of them were handwritten charts, but uh, we just didn't have time to uh, process them through a typewriter or a computer or anything. But the charts were good and they were very explicit. They uh, says, here's the way it is. and We wish we had better data, but we don't. Thiokol engineers argued that the colder the temperature, the slower the O-rings would seal. If both primary and secondary O-rings failed, hot gas would leak and cause a catastrophic explosion. Their conclusion was unanimous. We recommended no launch. The entire Thiokol group recommended no launch. Thiokol set a minimum launch temperature of 53 degrees Fahrenheit 11 degrees centigrade and assumed NASA would simply rubber stamp their conclusion but they were wrong. Well, I thought it was a very poor briefing. To be making a briefing like that about something as important as flight safety uh, the night before the launch I thought it was an extremely poor briefing. NASA engineers at Marshall started to pull apart Thiokol's presentation arguing that their data was contradictory and inconclusive. You don't do engineering by emotion. I mean, I, you can't get up there and say, hey, I got a gut feeling this thing's going to blow up. I mean, you know, they'll take you to the funny farm. We're always probed as to the soundness of the rationale that we're presenting. But that night, I was hammered way beyond what I'd ever experienced as, as an engineer ever in the aerospace industry. Those like old people thought that we were being nasty to them or something. The, the arguments were so vehement and uh, vociferous or whatever. We always did that with our contractors, but uh, what we did that night was mild compared to what we normally did. No temperature guideline had ever been established for the O-rings. Not being able to launch below 11 degrees centigrade would destroy the shuttle's ambitious schedule. But NASA could not launch against a contractor's recommendation. I mean, I'm sitting here, I'm listening to the data. The only thing I remember telling George uh, Hardy, sitting right here, I said, George, I said, if these guys persist in this recommendation not to launch, I said, we well, can't launch. And George agreed with me. I mean, we were, we were at their mercy. NASA concluded that they were not convinced of any correlation between low temperature and O-ring failure. Thiokol asked for a five-minute recess. As soon as the button was pressed on a teleconference to sever us and mute us between us and NASA, our general manager said in a soft voice, we have to make a management decision. It was obvious that they were going to change the decision or attempt to write things on a piece of paper that justified changing it from a no-launch to a launch decision to accommodate their major customer. 